Hello and welcome everybody to today's lovely winter wonderland here at my local on the Mendips. Now, for all our viewers in the Southern Hemisphere, I am very jealous of you because it must be roasty toasty. Back here, it's minus three at the moment, which brings me nicely onto today's video. How to handle that winter riding and make it a little bit more bearable. So sit back, make a cuppa and let's dive on in. Right, my first top tip for making winter more bearable is actually pre-packing your kit and your bike the night beforehand. So getting everything ready all in one place, all in one bag, almost a checklist, if you like, of what you're going to need means that you're not gonna turn up to the trail center and be like, flipping heck, I forgot my leggings, I'm gonna freeze to death. So just having that all a bit more methodical rather than rushing around in the morning, and even the same with your bike, making sure it's prepped and ready for that winter shred loaded up good to go just means that you are going to take some of the stress of that rushed morning because our days are shorter now so you know shorter days less time to pack and faff around you just want to spend it riding so having a little checklist having a kit bag getting everything sorted organized put in there the night before is the best way to do it Okay, let's talk all things gear related because having the right gear to tackle the winter in is gonna make a massive difference, especially if it's really extreme weather, so very wet or very cold. Today, like I said, it is pretty chilly and you can see I'm even wearing gloves, so let's start there. A good set of windproof Gore-Tex, preferably if you can get them because it's a really good quality gloves, but something that's gonna keep the chill off of your hands, especially if they do get a bit wet, is gonna make a huge difference to just being able to feel what you're doing on the bike. Underneath here, well, I've got a solid base layer and on the bottom, I've got some long leggings as well. You can get these long leggings in the GMBN shop, actually, if you do head over there and have a little gander now. That kind of overlapping layers is sort of the base of my kit, if you like. It's keeping all that warmth tucked in. And then on top of that, I've got a race top, a gilet, and then this, it's got an insulated, another GMBN beauty padded jacket. And that again, because it's not wet, I've gone for sort of an insulated jacket to keep the warmth in. On top, at the moment, I've got my woolly hat on because I'm presenting to you guys and girls out there. But when I'm riding, I've actually got like a warm little hat that goes under my helmet for when it gets really cold, especially because I've got less hair now, annoyingly, so it's even chillier. Moving on down, well then next up, if you can go all in, I would recommend some great winter riding shoes. So I've got these great Shimano MW7s on. Again, they're windproof, they're waterproof, and they make a huge difference if you're gonna be out in it for a long period of time. But they can be pretty expensive, I get it. People are on a budget these days. So look at things like waterproof socks. They can be a lot more affordable and offer a similar kind of uh, protection for your feet as well. Right, I briefly touched on this a minute ago and we're gonna talk coat choice because I think outer layers make the biggest of difference. So today, like I said, it is very cold, but it's not wet. The, the ground's frozen solid. There's no puddles around when I'm out for a spin. So I've gone with, like I said, the insulated jacket here, something to actually keep the warmth in. I'd mix this up in the winter if it turned into an incredibly wet and rainy ride, if it was a little milder and the trails are horrible and gunky out. Well then, if that was the case, I'd go for a much thinner but waterproof jacket, something that's gonna keep the wind out, but most importantly, the rain, the mud, and the wet. If I was to wear something, a coat like this when it was horrible and raining, it's just gonna get really like absorbent. It's gonna take on a lot of water. You're gonna get really cold in that because it's gonna, the insulating properties aren't gonna work as well. So you want something that's a lot more splash proof. So just think about that when you are planning your ride. Think about the type of layer that's going to be required for your next winter shred and dress appropriately. We've talked all things coats, now what about those layers underneath? Well, some clever layering can make a ride much more bearable. So let's have a little look at what you should be wearing underneath your coats. Okay, so I have said many layers make light work. And here's how I would begin. So at the very bottom, the first layer is a good solid base layer. This is gonna be fairly breathable, but quite close and tight fitting. It's gonna hold all that nice warmth in. Then on top of that, I'd go for something like a race jersey, but again, you don't want anything too synthetic. You want it to be quite breathable. You don't want it to get all sweaty and just hold it there and get all cold and damp. Over the top of that, I'd go for something like a gilet, something fairly insulated again to keep you nice and warm. And then on top of that, it's the coat. And like I said, that you want to tailor around the certain type of weather you're riding in. So today, like I said, insulate because it is very cold. 
Now I'm standing around quite a lot though, so I've actually got a hoodie on underneath because it's pretty flipping Baltic. And I've even layered my head up with my little hat as well. When it comes to legs, well, I've got some good merino wool socks on inside of these big old uh, Shimano booties to keep my feet as dry and as toasty as possible. Some good fleece lined or flock lined uh, leggings, which are built with a built in chamois just to make the ride warm and comfortable. And then you'll see actually this is a normal summer riding pant I've got on over the top. And it's again, because it isn't wet or horrible, these things aren't gonna absorb or take on any of the water or the mud. So they're not gonna get heavy and uncomfortable. So they're more just a protective outer layer, if you like, with that layer underneath doing all the sort of the warmth, the warming properties, if you like. If it was, again, pretty horrible, you'd go much more heavy duty and I would have actually a waterproof trouser on and top, on top, just to help battle off the elements. Oh my God. I think I gotta take a moment just to appreciate how good that trail was. I need to stop and just, oh. <laughs> Whoa, 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 what are you playing at, Rich? Why are you stopping again? This guy, unbelievable. Look, if you're stopping all the time on a ride, you are gonna get cold in those horrible months. Yep, social rides are fun, but look, all the starting and stopping is not good for you. If you can, try and keep it moving all the time. Unlike this guy who likes to gas on a little bit. Just back off the pace maybe a little bit on the climbs and just have a chat then rather than stopping at the top. Just keep it moving, mate. Come on, you gotta keep cool. it moving. Unbelievable. What's he like? So this last top tip of mine to make winter more bearable is the trusty mud guard. We talk about this quite a lot when it does come to winter riding, but it's so useful. Now today, obviously, it's frozen solid. It's not applicable. However, if it was a lot sloppier, then chucking a good old front mud guard on, at bare minimum, one of the little plastic sort of fender guards is a really useful thing to have. If it's really minging where you are, then something like the bigger wraparound type guards. And if it's really horrible, or you really want to keep the crap at bay, well then think of a big long rear mud guard as well. What they're going to do is just prolong the mud flicking up at you, so they're going to keep your vision kick nice and clean and your bike a little bit tidier and cleaner as well. Well worth putting on anyway. We're at the end of the video. It's freezing, but we've made it, people. Look, have you got any great tips for surviving those winter conditions? If you do, let me know in the comments down below. As always, a little subscribe to the channel goes a long way to showing some love. Click the bell as well if you want the notifications. I'm out of here because I'm gonna go get me a nice cup of tea because it's Baltic, but for me, for now, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you later.